Welcome to finding the missing terms in arithmetic sequences. So really important, you have to know that in order to use this method today, you need to know that you're specifically dealing with an arithmetic sequence. So you have to know that you have a common difference because you're adding or subtracting. So let's look at these examples. First and most importantly, they're telling you to find the missing terms in the arithmetic sequences. So we know that there has to be a common difference between each term. Now, both of these are pretty simple to figure out what's missing, right? Like the first one, if you thought about it a little bit, maybe you could figure out that the missing term is 8 and that you would be skipping by 6 each time. Now, the second one, maybe it's also easy, but it's a little bit more complicated, right? The more and more terms that are missing, the harder and harder these problems become. And that's why we came up with an actual process to find the missing term, no matter how many steps you're skipping. So what you're going to think about is that as we go from one term to the next, you're adding the common difference. And then you go from the second one to the third, and you're adding a, another common difference. So that means if we started with 2, we add the common difference twice to get to the third term of 14. In other words, we're starting with 2, we made 2 jumps, and we got 14. And now you have an equation that you can easily solve, right? So you get 2d is equal to 12, and that your common difference has to be 6. Now 6 isn't the missing term because you would have to go back and do 2 plus 6 is equal to 8. And then you want to make sure it actually works. So you're going to do 8 plus 6, and that equals 14 to know that you did it properly. So going on to the next one. We are making 1, 2, 3 jumps. So I'm starting with 3, and then I'm jumping 3 terms ahead. So I have plus 3 jumps, which gives me the fourth term of 12. 12, not 14, sorry. And now you're going to solve the resulting equation. So 3d is equal to 9, so d has to equal 3. That means 3 plus 3 is 6, 3 plus 3 is 9, and just double check your work, 9 plus 3 gives you 12, which is what you wanted. I know that these can seem easy to skip to the equation right away, but I highly suggest that you draw what's happening. Because if you draw it out and if you visually see how many skips there are, it will be a lot less likely to make a mistake while coming up with the equation. So if you try the next one, given the fourth term in the arithmetic sequence is 18 and the seventh term is 42, they want you to find the fifth and sixth terms. So really we're going up to the seventh term. So I'm going to make seven boxes. There we go, seven. We're saying that the fourth term is 18, and the seventh term is 42. Now, I don't really care what happened before this, right, from terms 1 to 3. I just care about how to get from 18 to 42. So I'm making 1, 2, three jumps to get from the fourth term to the seventh term. So I'm going to have 18 plus three much jumps is equal to 42. And then I'm going to solve. So 3D is equal to 24. And D has to equal 8. So 18 plus 8 is going to give me 26, 
plus 8 is going to give me 34, plus 8 is going to give me 42, which means everything checks out. So a sub 4, I lied, a sub 5, which is what we wanted, is 26, and a sub 6 is 34. So again, just keep in mind, please sketch out what's happening. That way you could come up with your proper equation. And remember, if it's arithmetic only, you can add the common difference D each and every time. And that's all for this video.